any public relations person will tell you never open your remarks with statistics. And I'm famous for being disobedient. <laughs> and so I'm going to do just that. <laughs> and I'm going to take from a Pew research, and Pew does this research on religion, and particularly in the Islamic world, year after year. In 2013, they had the following question. They have this question all the time. But here goes. Do you favor or oppose making Sharia law or Islamic law the official law of the land in our country? 72% of Indonesians, 99% of Afghanis, 82% of Bangladeshis, 84% of Pakistanis, 74% of Egyptians, and on and on and on it goes, these overwhelming majorities of Muslims who favor Islamic law. My position is, and has always been, let's make a distinction between Islam as a doctrine and Muslims as fellow human beings who are incredibly diverse. I embrace Muslims, but I reject Islamic law. I reject Islamic law because it's totalitarian. I reject Islamic law because it's bigoted and especially bigoted against women. Where Islamic law becomes the law of the land, if these attitudes are translated into law, women will need a male guardian. Child marriage is reintroduced. You will be disinherited. If you are raped, it's your fault and you get stoned to death. And we see numerous examples of that today. Mm -hmm. I reject Islamic law because it's inherently hostile to women. It is so bigoted. And everything we talk about in this conference regarding Islamic women, we condemn all of these practices, but we will not defeat, we will not eradicate these practices unless we talk about the principle, and the principle is enshrined in Islamic law unreformed. And people have said Ayan Ali Hirsi and Donald Trump are speaking the same language, and he's a misogynist. I mean, I don't even want to complete that sentence when I think of him. So how do you feel like being on the same side as Trump? I, I've been doing this for about the la last 14 or 15 years, and maybe I'm allowed a sigh. <laughs> well, it's my job to provoke, so. <laughs> a sigh. Because number one, I'm amazed at the betrayal of Muslim women who for whatever reason have had an education and are able to emancipate themselves from Islamic law, insisting that Islamic law is not what it is and that we don't understand it. We live in the, we live in the information age. We are literate. Any of us here can pick up the Holy Quran and read the Hadith and beyond that, because we live in this age of interconnectedness, we can take a look at the facts of where Islamic law is implemented, what it looks like for everyone, and typically what it looks like for women. So Saudi Arabia is a country that implements Sharia law. Women are not allowed to drive. They have male guardians. Their testimony is worth half of that of men. They are subjected to every possible humiliation that you can think of. Ayatollah Khomeini, in 1979, with a great deal of public approval, became the supreme leader. He implemented Sharia law, Islamic law. You know, one of the first things that he did, he reduced the, <laughs> the age of marriage to nine. Everywhere where Islamic law is implemented, you have exactly that. How do they justify it? They'll say, they've said this to me, who's Muslim the they? organizations. Who's the they? Those who are pushing for Sharia law and those who want well, to implement are, Sharia so that's, law. That's not they a matter of debate. The Prophet, oh, Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad took Aisha, his, one of his wives after Khadija died, when she was you six know. and had sex with her when she was nine. That is Sharia law. I do not understand how someone but, as But this is not a debate about Sharia law. But this is not a debate about the Sharia law. But this is not a debate about the Sharia law. You want to get rid of child marriage? Get rid of Sharia law. 
there's Muslim diversity. Mm -hmm. And within that Muslim diversity, you're going to see people who take a lot of Islamic law and want to get it as pure as possible. But on the other spectrum, you see Muslims, and, I'm, and that makes me optimistic, more and more Muslims who on the inside, you may have heard today that there was a Bangladeshi blogger who was mm -hmm. hacked to death on the streets of Dhaka. Yeah. This has happened frequently in Cairo, in Tunisia, mm -hmm. even here in the United States of America. There are more and more Muslims who are not willing to lay the blame of their internal philosophical affairs on external factors like Zionists or the American media or stuff like that. They understand that they need to compete with the Islamists who are pushing for Sharia and they're pushing back. And I think that's what we need to embrace. And in doing so, and I think the most important way to, to do it is to acknowledge their fight, which is a dangerous fight. It's a fight where the people that you disagree with on the inside want to kill you. Mm. I don't mind arguing with mm. the Islamists and the extremists. They want to kill me, I don't want to kill them. Yeah. And I think ultimately the power of the word is going to win, but we have to, with everything in us, protect that freedom of speech from allegations of Islamophobia from all other kinds of fabricated ways of silencing people and ultimately from violence. Farah, 